All right, guys, so um, today the video is how to get six pack abs. guys so um, today the video is how to get six-pack abs so this was probably the one of the number one questions that uh, I got when I was a personal trainer working with people a lot of people say you know I want to get abs and uh, I'll share my personal experience with uh, that journey and um, yeah I'll just uh, make some recommendations and tell you exactly how to get six pack abs. So first we'll start with the structures. So we have our serratus anterior, which is the upper portion. It's actually, I'm, I'm going to include it in because it's part of the core. Um, it's more activated during a push. Uh, and an overextension. So the serratus is uh, often underdeveloped in a lot of people. And uh, if you are trying to get six pack abs, whether it's because you're competing or, you know, just general aesthetics, that is a pretty aesthetic muscle to develop. So um, you can do so through, you know, overextension when you're doing pushing, maybe with push-ups, uh, overextending at the top, um, bear crawls. Um, it's it's portion of like a reach, and uh, we don't often do that, especially in most of the movements that we do in the gym. We're always cued for retracted scapula or tucked your shoulder blades back, and that's gonna basically limit the development of that. So, uh, serratus anterior. Uh, then we have our obliques. Uh, we have internal and external. Uh, our transverse abdominis, which is like a deep tissue, when we're doing a, uh, a plank, it's your TVA that's going to be mainly activated. So your transverse abdominis, you want to think of that as like a compression, like it's, it's, it's like vacuuming everything together, keeping everything tight. Uh, and your obliques are majorly used during trunk rotation or twisting. Okay, but when people are talking about a six pack, it is specifically the rectus abdominis. So it's the muscles in the front of the body. That gives us our six pack look, okay? So those are the structures. They're all stimulated in a little bit of a different way. Like I said, serratus was uh, an extension or a push, a reach. Uh, your obliques are um, stimulated during trunk rotation uh, or twisting. Our TVA is more like we're trying to uh, squeeze everything really tight together, uh, vacuum everything, vacuum seal it, and then the rectus abdominis is highly activated during spinal flexion. So that's why people doing crunches. And and a lot and over the last I know since I've been in the fitness industry, uh, you've seen it go back and forth. Is it good for spinal health? Is it not? Um, I don't think it's completely conclusive. You can look at different camps. I know I respect uh, Stuart McGill. Uh, he is against that. He is what you call the McGill crunch, limits uh, pressure on the spine, which is fantastic. Uh, but uh, I think that, you know, a little bit isn't gonna hurt too much. So those are the structures. All right, so the conditions. So how do we get six pack? Okay, so. Number one, development. So from personal experience, uh, my first year of university, I cut hard. I got down to 
like 60 pounds lighter than I am. Uh, I think at the lowest I was like 155. And now I'm around like, uh, end of day, 210. When I was 155, I didn't have abs, okay? It's because they were not developed. I was doing lots of amounts of crunches and stuff like this, but it's just, I, I was went from being overweight to losing weight, getting in shape. I felt great, I looked good, but your abdominal, it doesn't, your abdominal definition and development doesn't just come overnight, okay? It's like any other muscle. You need to put it in the work, you need to put it in time, and it will develop from there, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna speak about the natural path because that's that's my focus so I mean if you're an enhanced athlete you might get abs overnight I don't know but uh, if you're really focusing and putting in time you know developing the abs and all the structures um, for their utility you know it's gonna it's not gonna happen overnight so I had a rapid weight loss I was uh, just extremely active and I dropped you know, 60 pounds within a matter of, I think, three months. And I would not suggest to do that. But when I got down and my goal was to get abs, the abs weren't there. I learned a couple things about that. At the time, I thought, geez, maybe I just don't have the genes to get abdominals like that. Like the guys in the movies, athletes, maybe I just don't have that. I was wrong. I... Uh, I, I just, and this is why one of the reasons that I wanted to do the video is because misinformation. I thought some people, maybe some people just can't get it. Everybody can get it. You just need to put in the work. So number one is development because I, you know, I've seen a lot of people cut down and they're like, I'm so lean now, but I don't have abs. Well, you need to train your abs and you need to develop them. And then two, you need to be lean enough. So your body fat percentage needs to be low enough to show the abs, so uh, for men, four to 13. Now four is your bodybuilder on stage, I'm in a competition, um, and now like if you're 4%, you're a conditioned bodybuilder, half the time guys don't come in even close to that. They say they're a lot leaner than that, but they're not. A true bodybuilder coming in around 4% would be, uh, Greg Doucette is known for his conditioning, he always comes in extremely conditioned uh, when he's doing his uh, shows, and you can check out his YouTube channel, but he would be 4%. Most people don't get to 4%. If you're 5%, maybe 6%, and then you're getting into the men's physique guys, they'll be like 6%. Um, that's extremely lean, okay? You're gonna have great abs there, but you don't need to be that lean to get your abs. So I, I put a variation. So you can, a four would be the bottom end because, you know, the essential fat levels, people say, oh, it's 2%, I was 2%. If you're 2%, you're probably in a coma in the hospital dying. 4%, I think, in my opinion, is probably as lean as you can go. Maybe some people get to three if they're freaks and they're genetic outliers, I'm sure it happens, but you're in your essential fats. Uh, and you wouldn't be walking around. 13 would be probably, and you could be even high as uh, 16%. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because everybody has different genetics. Everybody has different development of abs. Some people's abs may develop more outwards, okay? Um, your insertions might be different. Your muscle bellies are different. So all these factors play in. So you could be 16%, which is still like healthy, uh, I'm going to suggest if you want to see your abs for a male, anywhere from 10 to 13, it's probably 13, they're going to be peeking through if you're an average guy. Uh, 10, if you really want to be, you know, standing out on the beach or something like that, it'd be 10%, okay? Uh, women, it's a little different, so uh, 9 to 20%. So why the variation? Well, women, uh, central fats... Uh, tends to be at a higher ratio, higher level, uh, just because fats moderate um, menstrual cycle, fats moderate hormonal uh, fluctuations, women need that. Um, it's just part of the genetic makeup. 9% is their essential fats, probably not too many people around there, but if you're Miss Olympia, you might be 9, 10%, you know, you're shredded. All the way up to 20%, so, you know, 20 is on the high end. I said if 17 to 20, 16 to 20, you're definitely going to be seeing some abdominal uh, definition there. So those would be the ranges you want to be in if you are looking to get your abs. And those are the two major conditions. Are they developed enough and are you lean enough? Okay. So 
what are my recommendations? So abs need to be overloaded like anything else. Uh, due to the nature of the abdominals, a lot of coaches say you can train them almost every day. I know Arnold Schwarzenegger would train them for 30 minutes every day. I would recommend if you're starting out new to ab training, three times a week, 30 minutes. Uh, I think that's going to give you a lot of uh, benefit and uh, I think that's a good place to start. Now what if you're more advanced? Well, I would recommend maybe including them in after the majority of your workouts. You can add a little bit of weight. I know that's what I do. Uh, I'll do like the ab machine um, where you can actually weight it. I find that's great for overloading. You can do crunches uh, with a, a rope with some weight that'll overload your abs as well. Uh, so that can help develop your abs even further, take it one up. Now, some of my favorite ones are like the ab wheel. There's no weight to that, but it's extremely hard. There's a lot of activation of your abs. Leg raises, huge activation of your abs. I'd recommend that one as well. Um, and then any weighted exercise. And for me personally, I don't often train my obliques too much. Um, I just find I don't want to develop my abs like more outwards uh, on the sides. I'd rather just focus on the center and for myself, I'm okay with that. Um, so those are my recommendations. If you're new, start three times a week. You wanna make sure you're dieting uh, and getting lean enough. And you can definitely check your body composition uh, at any of the gyms you go to. I'm sure they have a, a body fat analyzer. Those things aren't 100% correct by any means, but they do give you a baseline. The best, the best tracker will be the mirror and take your pictures, but with slow, steady uh, progress and commitment, those steps that you're taking will help you get to your end result, the six pack. And if you're somewhere of a male in 15% range, uh, you can definitely have a six pack by the summer. Female, if you're at 25%, you can definitely have a six pack by the summer, uh, as long as your abs are developed enough. Uh, because basically for a male, if you lost 10 pounds at 15%, if you were 200 pounds, that would bring you down to the 10% uh, and your abs should be popping. Uh, if a woman was 150 pounds, if they lost seven, seven and a half pounds. So we're not talking about crazy dieting here. We're just talking about chipping away, putting in the work. We still have 12 weeks before uh, the summer hits. So uh, guys, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Uh, and I hope this helps. Alrighty, take care.